Welcome. Welcome to this video. I want to tell you the story of I saw the Beatles. The Beatles! At Candlestick Park in San Francisco in 1966. Candlestick Park was the, the baseball park for the San Francisco area in those days. It's now been replaced by a different one. But uh, the Beatles did play there. I used to uh, have a friend that uh, I played guitars with. I used to play guitar, guitar at home and he was a, he was a good guitarist. And uh, he went in the Navy <laughs> for a year and a half and he came back and uh, as before he went in the Navy, he used to help me to transcribe records like B.B. King records, learn the licks and the solos. And in those days, transcribing meant, we called it, drop the needle. So you have to have the record going and then you have to drop the needle in the right place for what you want to learn. It's very difficult. And uh, before my friend went in the Navy, we'll call him Mike. Mike would, uh, I'd drop it down and he'd sing it and play it. And then he would teach it to me. But he went into the Navy and uh, about a year and a half, I had a knock on my door on a Saturday or Sunday morning. I opened the door and it was Mike. <laughs> and uh, so I had gotten better in a year and a half. I'd gotten a little better. I was playing my guitar every day. And uh, we started just practicing together. And uh, we would sit and play together blues music you know I'd play rhythm he'd play lead he'd play rhythm I'd play lead and um, we got into this habit where we'd be there for hours and I'd be playing and exploring and discovering things and he would be doing the same thing he'd be playing exploring discovering things and we weren't playing together at all and then at some point we would come and play together and then we go back to our uh, research and every once in a while you know he might say hey Antar what are you playing there and I'd show him sometimes I'd say hey Mike what, what's that you know and uh, so I learned a lot doing that so w one, one time we were practicing uh, at his house at Mike's house and he lived uh, in, in the hills above uh, the small town of Milbrae in Northern California, which is a suburb of San Francisco. And it's not too far from Candlestick Park. And I think everybody knew that the Beatles were playing there that day. I hadn't uh, planned to go and see the Beatles. I didn't buy a ticket or anything. And, I can imagine, I can imagine then what it must have been like to get a, a ticket to go see the Beatles at Candlestick Park, which, by the way, became the last public concert of the Beatles. They just dropped out of touring and concertizing to uh, focus on uh, studio work. So, uh, except for that rooftop concert, if that was a concert, nobody really knows. Candlestick was the end, 1966, for that. So we were at Mike's house in the hills above Millbrae, and uh, I walked in that day, and his father was his father was an old guy, about 60 or something years old in those days. He was retired. He was a musician too, and he was playing on an old ancient harpsichord right with the keyboard two keyboards or whatever and this thing also had foot pedals acoustic foot pedals 
and he had his music. He was playing J.S. Bach. You know, he was playing Baroque music. So, you know, I very respectfully came in and said, hello, and slipped by him, and I went into the garage where Mike was, you know, and Mike was sitting there with a an old 1957 gold top Les Paul, kind of torn up a little bit, and I had an old 1954 Stratocaster, Fender Stratocaster. So, you know, we had our, our rhythm and our energy, and so we just put our backs against the wall in the garage, so we're not going to disturb Papa with his Bach, right? We put our backs against the wall, and we started practicing. So we were doing what we do, you know. I'd play my thing, and he'd play his thing, and we weren't playing together, and sometimes we'd fall together and play together. And Mike says, hey, uh, you want to go see the Beatles? The Beatles are a candlestick. You want to go see the Beatles? And I said, well, you know, I had planned to. I don't have any tickets. Why? You got tickets, you know? He says, no, we'll, we'll just go down there and let's just go down there and, uh, you know, hang around in the parking lot and listen to the girls scream. So, and now in those days, 1966, during, it was still during the British invasion uh, in the United States, uh, whenever a famous band would play, you know, an English band, the Beatles, the Stones, the Animals, uh, anybody, it was the custom for all the girls in the audience to scream, scream their guts out continually. I heard a rumor that Eric Burden and the Animals played at the Circle Star Theater in Redwood City, and they started doing the screaming, and Burden stopped the band, and he said to them, why don't you just listen to the music, you know, stop screaming. Anyway, Mike said, let's go into the parking lot at Candlestick Park while the Beatles are playing and listen to the girls scream. I said, all right. So we drove down there, parked the car, and we went into the parking lot, and we were kind of just, we were just kind of like moving around. It sounded like the music had already started. And to be sure, there was a lot of screaming going on. And then Mike said, look at this. And he found a stairway, an old creaky stairway that went up. You know, Candlestick Stick Park was like a big bowl. You had to go up the side of it on a staircase and you enter on the top. So he found a stairway. A stairway to the Beatles. <laughs> so we we went up the stairway. We're going up the stairway. The Beatles are playing. And, uh, yeah. Ooh. The Beatles are playing. And we get to the top. And some guy approaches us. He's like, he looks like a ticket man. And I didn't know. I thought, oh, shit, we're in trouble. We're going to get in trouble for crashing this place. The guy comes over to us and he sells us each a ticket, $6.50 to hear the Beatles on their last gig at Candlestick Park and no waiting, you know. So we went in, we went in and we took our seat. The Beatles were playing, amazing. And uh, you could see, you know, with them set up in a, a baseball park, um, because of the screaming and because of other things, because of the fact that the sound systems in those days were not the big, magnificent sound systems that we have today, um, they hadn't been able to hear each other when they're, you know, when you're playing, you need to hear each other. You need to hear yourself. You need to hear each other. Nowadays, we have monitors. Monitor speakers are speakers that are like pointed toward the artist. But, you know, that wasn't the fashion then, not till a little later. And uh, they just hadn't been hearing themselves. And anyway, everybody is screaming and they were getting burned out on the touring and the hotels and always being whisked around in different places. And so that's why that was their last gig. That's why they decided to just go into the studio from then on. You know, they couldn't hear, hear themselves. It's not 
it's not fun to play anymore if you can't hear yourself you can't hear the others and so that was one of the complaints that they had about playing concerts and the screaming and everything but this time in Candlestick Park now I don't know what the Beatles were hearing whether they could hear themselves or hear each other I don't know but I could hear it clear as a bell you know there were speakers everywhere and this is a baseball park right there were speakers in the infield monitors pointed at the Beatles speakers in the infield speakers in the outfield and it was really clear and I could very easily hear um, the Beatles harmonies were rough and out of tune and they were kind of ragged you know singing and playing together and uh, it didn't sound very good really you know it'd be nicer to hear a Beatles record you know and anyway all those people went there just to scream so anyway we heard the Beatles <laughs> I can't remember so long ago I can't remember what songs they played I think you can look that up on the internet in the vaults you know that have set lists of what bands played and where and when and all that but I can't remember I sort of remembered Ticket to Ride I don't know uh, and then the other act was the Ronettes uh, the Ronettes are, were a girl group that were managed by the rock entrepreneur Phil Spector and um, he was actually married to the lead singer Ronnie Spector and so it was the Ronettes and uh, it, if those of you who remember they had a a big hit called Be My Baby and it was used by uh, Martin Scorsese in one of his early films it was used uh, in that movie about gang life on the street um, name escapes me right now with Harvey Keitel and Robert De Niro and uh, it was con you know Phil Spector was considering suing Scorsese for that for using it without permission anyway the Ronettes they had many hits uh, they were good performers but the Ronettes were a trio of women and they were singers you know so it's not like a band like the Beatles it's important to remember that you know sure there were bands all over the world but before the Beatles uh, in in mass media culture the the artists were usually billed as a single artist you know uh, Frankie Avalon Elvis uh, Fabian uh, you know Annette Funicello <laughs> And, but yeah they perform with bands but they sometimes perform with different bands when they'd go on tour you know they'd get a local band so the Ronettes had their band with them it was a magnificent band that was a band that was put together by, by Phil Spector and I found out recently that actually the Ronettes were on the tour with the Beatles so they had toured all the other dates uh, before Candlestick and Specter put together Specter knew a lot of musicians and he gave a lot of musicians their start you know, Sonny and Cher and uh, the Righteous Brothers and he didn't give the Righteous Brothers their start but he he produced uh, You've Lost That Loving Feeling and he also composed it a little bit he put the Latin part in that song so he got the best musicians <laughs> uh, some of them were probably um, musicians from Hollywood from Columbia Records called the Wrecking Crew which there's been a lot of there's been a lot of buzz about the Wrecking Crew in recent years and I think uh, the lead guitarist was James Burton who was a guy that played with Ricky Nelson and he played with Elvis so the Ronettes actually sounded really good to me. I, I really enjoyed the Ronettes. So that was an interesting piece of history 
1966 was kind of a turning point. And I saw the Stones that year also at San Jose Civic. And that was also just screaming madness, screaming, you know, I, it was disappointing for me. I was a big Stones fan and uh, I couldn't hear them. And none of the Rolling Stones on the stage were really much interested in performing. They just were playing. And while Mick Jagger was gyrating and jumping around, you know, and the girls were screaming. You know, so maybe I should call this video the scream. Anyway, I hope you enjoy that story. It's an interesting story. How we got in there. And probably sad and ironic for some of the Beatles fans. I wasn't a big Beatles fan, you know. I hadn't planned on going. I hadn't. I just heard about it, you know. We actually got to go in there and see it, see the show. So it was great. So now we're coming to the end of this video. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Ciao.